Hello friends, welcome back. Friends, in this video, we will discuss about discounted cash flow technique in detail. In the last video, we discussed two broader methods of valuation, relative valuation and DC valuation. And out of these two methods, we discussed relative valuation technique in detail. Now, in this video, we will discuss DCF valuation technique in detail. We will discuss step-by-step -step approach to do DCF valuation of a company. So let's understand. DCF valuation. Friends, under DCF valuation, we estimate value of the company based on its future cash flows discounted to the present value. So here, valuation is based on future cash flows which are discounted to the present value. Now friends, we can divide this process of TCA valuation into following steps. Okay, so let's discuss step-by-step -step approach to do DCA valuation. Step one, projection of free cash flows. Friends, under this step, we project cash flows of the business for specific period of time. Here, the period of time for which we need cash flows dependent upon the high growth phase of the business. If the business is going to stay in the high growth phase for next five years, we project cash flows for the five years. If the business is expected to sustain high growth for next 10 years, then this projection period should be 10 years. And if the business is already matured, it does not have any high growth phase, we can skip this step, step one. So projection of free cash flows is basically related with high growth phase okay it's a high growth phase of the business then once you are done with the explicit projection of cash flows for the high growth phase once you are done with the step one in the next step step two you will calculate cost of capital WACC of the business so we need to discount future cash flows to the present value and for discounting future cash flows we need cost of fund, the cost at which company is borrowing its capital from the market. Then in the step three, we have to calculate terminal value. So this terminal value is what? This terminal value captures value the cash flows of the business beyond projection period. So once your projection period is over, say five year, 10 year, and the business is still going concern, right? So business will still go on. What about the cash flows, what business will earn after this period? So we will capture this value through terminal value. Okay. So under terminal value, we will capture value of the business for the remaining life. Once we are done with that. So under step one, we have projected cash flows for specific period of time. This can be for five years, 10 years, depending upon the high growth phase of the business. And here we are capturing value of the cash flows from the remaining life. So step one and step three, they are completing the entire life of the business. Okay. Now in the next step, guys, we will discount this cash flows to the present value. So the cash flows, what we calculated under step one, okay. And terminal value, which is the cash value of the business for the remaining life. These two cash flows will be discounted to the present value using the discount rate, what we calculated under step two. Okay, then once you got the present value of future cash flows plus terminal value, we'll add both these values and we'll get the value of the firm. This is DCF value of the firm, which is nothing but present value of the future cash flows and present value of terminal value. Okay, in the next step, step five, we will calculate DCF value of equity because in the step five, in the last step, we calculated value of the entire business based on the future cash flows. Now from this value, we will subtract value of the other claim holders in the business to get the balancing value of the equity. So value of the firm, what you got under step five, minus debt, claim of debt on the business, plus cash and cash equivalents, plus non-operating assets. So basically guys, from the value of the business of firm, you first have to settle debt. Okay, whatever debt you have, your business has taken, you have to pay this debt first. And if in case company has raised capital from other sources like minority interest, preference shares, those, those uh, uh, claims we also need to settle. Then whatever balance is left, 
is left for the equity. In this balance, we will add the cash flow balance, which is there in the balance sheet because this surplus cash belongs to the equity. And we'll also add value of the non-operating assets. If there is any non-operating assets which is laying in the business, that will also be added in the value of equity. Because in discounting process, in discounting of free cash flows, what we calculated under step one and terminal value under step three, they are just capturing value of the operations. If your business has any non-operating assets, which is there in the balance sheet, we need to add this value over and above the discounted value of the cash flows. Okay. So this is the six step process to find DCF value of any company or business. Friends, now let's discuss step one, two, three in detail. How we calculate free cash flows, how we calculate cost of capital and how we calculate terminal value. And then we will move to a live example. We'll do valuation of a real company using DCF approach. Let's do that. Step one, free cash flows to the business. Free cash flows. Friends, free cash flows is the cash flow which is available for distribution amongst all stakeholders in the business. Okay, this cash flow is free. Okay, after meeting the requirement of the business, reinvestment requirement, whatever cash flow is left, this is called free cash flows. So how we calculate this free cash flows? Because this cash flow we are going to discount in DCF. This free cash flows to the firm is equal to earnings to the firm, EBIT. EBIT is basically earnings available to the entire firm, operating profit, minus taxes on EBIT. Because this earning is before taxes, right? This earning available to the firm before taxes. So we have to pay taxes first. This is called NOPAT, earnings EBIT net of taxes, NOPAT. Now friends, in this NOPAT, we will add what depreciation amortization expenses this dn expense we have already deducted from ebit okay and as it's a non-cash expense we don't incur any cash outflow when we incur you know dn expense so this should be added back and when we add dn expense in the nopet we get cash earnings okay this earnings is based on cash this cash earning is available to the entire business firm okay cash earnings from this cash earnings, we first have to set off the reinvestment what is required in the business. Okay, so business need reinvestment in the form of capital expenditure and working capital change. So we'll minus first capital expenditure, okay, plus minus change in working capital. With the growth in the business, you might need more working capital. You might need to block more capital or invest more capital in the debtors, stock, net of creditors and all. Plus means in case there is a decrease in the working capital requirement and minus means in case there is a more working capital required. There's a growth in the working capital required. Okay. After making all these adjustments, guys, we'll get free cash flows to the business. This free cash flows is available to the entire firm, okay, debt and equity and other claim holders in the business. Now, calculation of cost of capital. So how we calculate this cost of capital? This cost is the weighted average cost of all sources of capital employed in the business. So if your business has employed equity and debt, two sources of capital, WACC would be weighted average cost of debt and equity both. And if there are other sources of capital, we'll add those sources of capital also in this VAC. So let's understand how we calculate VAC. Cost of debt, net of tax. Friends, this is the cost of debt employed in the business. So this cost of debt is nothing but the interest rate, net of tax. Because when you raise debt, when you pay interest on the debt, you also get tax shield. Okay, you get tax deduction on the interest. So we are netting of this tax saving from the cost of debt into weightage of debt. Okay, so the percentage of debt in the total capital structure. So if you have raised say 25% of the capital, if you have raised 25% of the capital from debt, we'll multiply this cost of debt with 25%. Okay, cost of equity, friends, Cost of equity is the expected return by the shareholders in the company. Okay, so when they put their money in the company, they have some expectation. They have minimum required return from the company. This is called cost of equity multiplied by 
weightage of equity okay so percentage of capital you have raised from equity this will be multiplied with the cost of equity so say if you have raised 75 percent capital from equity will multiply this cost of equity with 75 percent so cost of debt multiplied by weightage of debt plus cost of equity multiplied by weightage of equity friends cost of debt as we discussed is nothing but the interest rate the rate what you are supposed to pay on your debt cost of equity friends cost of equity as we discussed is the expected return by the shareholders so what return your shareholders are expecting how we capture this we use CAPM model to calculate this return CAPM model the full form of CAPM model is capital asset pricing model with the help of this model we try to gauge expectation of the shareholders so guys how we calculate this risk-free rate is the return what your shareholders can earn without taking any risk okay so by investing in the most secured assets in the country what return they can earn maybe the bank FD maybe the government bond return and all okay so let's say this risk-free return is say six percent you can invest your money without taking any risk and you can get six percent return okay and guys as we know investing in the equity is a risky thing right when you invest in equity you expect higher return okay so how investor is compensated for that risk this compensation is coming from this factor beta into equity risk premium so what equity risk premium is ERP equity risk premium is the excess return excess return excess return earned by the market earned by equity market over and above risk free rate okay so if market is giving 15 percent return and the risk free rate is six percent then erp is nine percent so market is giving nine percent extra return for investing in equity okay because you are taking risk and you're getting additional return but guys we know that the risk of the company risk of the companies in the market is different from the market risk okay all companies risk is not same they differ in the risk right few companies are more riskier than the market few companies are less riskier than the market and accordingly the premium should change so we multiply this ERP with the beta of the company beta is what it's a riskiness of the company riskiness of company to the market okay so how risky your business is compared to the market accordingly the return will be adjusted if your beta is two times if the business is two times riskier than the market then your premium should also be double in this case my cost of equity would be what nine percent is the excess return but market is given into two because your risk is two times the market 18 percent plus six percent is the minimum required return what you can earn without taking risk so your cost of equity would be 24 percent and we'll multiply this cost of equity with the weightage of equity which we are assuming 75 percent so if your cost of equity is 24 percent and the weightage of equity is 75 percent this will be multiplied and we'll get the weighted average cost of equity okay and it plus cost of debt so let's assume your cost of debt is 10 percent and tax rate is say 30 percent so your net of tax cost of debt is 7 percent you will multiply this with 25 percent and if you add both these factors you will get your weighted average cost of capital okay now friends step three the most important value of any DCF model is what terminal value okay this value captures maximum part of the DCF value because your projection would be maybe three years five year ten year right this would be for the limited period and the remaining life cash flows remaining value of the business is captured in the terminal value it captures value of remaining life of the business so friends normally this terminal value contributes value equal to 60 to 80 percent of total DCF value this is a very important factor in your total DCF okay friends there are two methods to calculate this terminal value Gordon's growth model so what Gordon's growth model do under this model we calculate terminal value by applying this small equation which is cf1 upon 
r minus g what cf1 in this equation cf1 is the next year cash flow the cash flows for immediate next year okay so suppose you are calculating your terminal value at the end of year 5 because you are ending your projection at the end of year 5 cf1 would be for the next year sixth year okay r is what the weighted average cost of capital what you have calculated in the previous step g is what your constant growth rate right this is the growth rate what your business is going to sustain forever okay so this growth rate is a nominal growth rate guys we don't keep very high growth rate here because we we are assuming this growth rate forever right so normally this growth rate is close to the GDP growth rate of the country because we assume that in the long term your business can sustain growth which is close to the GDP growth rate of the country. Okay, Friends, another method of terminal value is the exit multiple method. So under this method, the basis of terminal value is a relative approach. We try to find value of the business at the end of projection period by applying a multiple. Okay. So that's why this is called exit multiple method. Here we are using multiple approach, relative approach to find value of the business at the end of projection period. Friends, under this method, we multiply EBITDA of the company of the last year at the end of projection period. So say if you're ending a projection at in year five, this is the EBITDA of fifth year multiplied by exit multiple. Okay. So this exit multiple is nothing but the relative valuation of your business in the market. So if the market is giving 14 times valuation to your business. Okay. If the EBITDA multiple for your business is 14 times, say as per the industry analysis, we found that in this sector, companies are priced 14 times. So whatever your EBITDA would be at the end of projection period, we will multiply this EBITDA with 14 to get the approximate value of the business as per relative approach. Okay. And this will give you a terminal value of the business, the value of the business at the end of projection period. So friends, these are the two major method of calculation of terminal value. Okay. Now friends, we will apply this six step process of DCF on a real company. Let's see how we do DCF valuation of a company listed on the market using intrinsic approach. So we'll apply this method of DCF on valuation of PepsiCo, which is a beverage company, soft drink company. And we already have projections of this company and we'll see how we can find intrinsic or DCF value of this company. Let's do that. Friends, as you can see in this spreadsheet, I have detailed projection of PepsiCo. So you can see I have projected income statement where I have three years historical numbers and for next five years projection projected numbers. Okay. Cash flow statement is also projected. Balance sheet is also projected. We also have projected schedules. So this projection is already there. This projection is already in place. Now let's see how we can do DCF valuation of PepsiCo. How we can find intrinsic value of PepsiCo using this projection. Friends, this is an output of DCF. And if you remember, we discussed six step process of DCF. And the step one, it was calculation of free cash flows, projection of free cash flows. As we already have projection of earnings and all, so let's calculate projected free cash flows. Step one, free cash flows projection of PepsiCo. Okay. So friends, to project free cash flows to the firm, we need to start with the earnings of the firm. Okay. EBIT. We can see that my valuation date is 31st December 22. So my first projected year is 31st December 23. Okay. And I'm doing this projection for next five years. I'm assuming that the PepsiCo will mature, its business will mature in the next five years. Okay. So EBIT, let's link EBIT. We'll go to the income statement. Earnings normalized, EBIT normalized without any exception and we'll link. Okay. Earnings for next five years. Now friends, from this EBIT, we have to less taxes. So we need tax rate for this and tax rate. Again, we can link from the income statement because we projected income tax there. So tax rate for the next five years. Here we go. So gradually, gradually this tax rate is increasing. 20.2% uh, is the current effective tax rate. And we are expecting that in the long term, company is supposed to pay marginal tax rate, the statutory tax rate applicable for the US companies. 
So by end of the projection period, we are assuming this tax rate will move up to 27%. So tax on EBIT, I will use minus sign first because tax is outflow. Your EBIT into tax rate, okay, and we will drag this. NOPET, after tax earnings, earning before tax plus tax expenses 10969 and you copy this formula okay so we got not net operating profit after taxes for next five years now friends we'll add back dna okay we'll add dna in this we'll subtract working capital change and we'll also subtract capital expenditure okay so depreciation amortization expenses we can link this from the cash flow statement dna expense copy this for the next five years increase decrease in working capital again guys we calculate this change in working capital in cash flow so i'll link this from the cash flow statement sum of changes in the working capital component you can see changes in the current assets and current liabilities okay so we'll add this and copy okay so this is working capital change what you have projected for next five years minus working capital expenditure again guys in the cash flow statement we have capital expenditure projection also so i link this from the cash flow statement capital expenditure and copy this now friends we got all component required for calculation of free cash flows to the firm okay so free cash flows to the firm would be equal to sum of NOPET and all these component DNA, depreciation amortization expenses, working capital change and capital expenditure. Okay. And just copy this. So friends, my step one is over, right? My step one was what? Projection of free cash flows. This part is done. Under step two, under step two, we will calculate cost of capital okay WACC discount rate friends as we discussed cost of capital is equivalent to what it's a cost of debt net of tax shield into weightage of debt plus cost of equity into weightage of equity okay now let's first calculate cost of debt net of tax PepsiCo's rate of interest as per its current credit rating is 5.1%. Okay, so there, there is a separate calculation of this 5.1%. We have calculated this using current credit rating of PepsiCo. Tax rate, applicable tax rate for the company is 27%. So net of tax cost of debt is 5.1 into 1 minus 27%. It is 3.7%. Now let's calculate cost of equity. As we discussed, cost of equity can be calculated using CAPM model. Expected return by the shareholders. Okay, so this can be calculated using this equation: risk-free rate plus beta into equity risk premium. Guys, this is one of the method of calculation of cost of equity and a very popular method. Under this method, we calculate cost of equity based on risk your investors are taking in your company okay so we need risk free rate for this in this equation and risk free rate is the most secure return your shareholders can earn without taking any risk here guys we have taken 10 year government bond yield of the us market as a risk free return which is 3.88 percent okay we'll add in this risk premium applicable for the company which is beta into erp erp is the standard risk premium for the equity market and we'll multiply this with the beta of the company which is riskiness of the pepsico to the market so here guys you can see beta of pepsico is 0.63 pepsico is 0.63 times riskier than the market and equity risk premium applicable for the market is 5.9 percent market is giving 5.9 percent return over and above risk free rate so we'll multiply this beta with the erp of the market to get risk premium applicable for PepsiCo. Friends, this additional risk premium, which we have 0%, this is normally we uh, consider in case of the small size company. 
so as the pepsico is a large cap company so this risk premium is not applicable here so cost of equity would be equivalent to risk free rate plus beta into equity risk premium it is 7.6 percent so we got cost of debt which is 3.7 percent and cost of equity 7.6 percent for pepsico now let's calculate WACC weighted average cost of capital for PepsiCo. Friends, as per the historical capital structure of PepsiCo, the debt percentage in its total capital is 16.5%. PepsiCo is maintaining leverage in the range of 16.5% as debt and the balance is coming through equity. Okay, so its weighted average cost of capital would be cost of debt net of tax which is 3.7 percent cost of equity 7.6 percent okay so if we multiply cost of debt cost of debt with the weightage of debt we got 0.6 percent okay and cost of equity with the weightage of equity we got 6.4 percent weighted average cost of capital which is summation of weighted average cost of debt and equity is 7 percent okay PepsiCo is supposed to pay 7% return to its on its combined capital. We got step 2 value, weighted average cost of capital for PepsiCo. Now friends, let's move to the step 3. And the step 3 was calculation of terminal value. Let's calculate terminal value. So on DCF tab, friends, as we discussed, there are two methods to calculate terminal value, Gordon's growth model and exit multiple. Let's first calculate terminal value using Gordon's growth model. And as per Gordon's growth model, terminal value is equivalent to CF1 upon R minus G. CF1 is the next year cash flow. Okay. R is the WACC and G is the constant growth rate. Okay. Now friends, here, as you can see, we have done projection up to year 2027. So my next year cash flow would be cash flow for the year 2028 growth rate we are assuming 2.5 percent we are expect we are assuming that pepsico will grow at the rate of 2.5 percent post projection period wacc we have already calculated seven percent right so we can link wacc discount rate here let's link it from vac sheet seven percent now let's calculate terminal value guys okay for that we need cf1 so cf1 we have last year cash flow right 11944 into 1 plus growth rate this will be your next year cash flow divided by bracket start r r is what your discount rate minus g 2.5 percent your terminal value is 273074 okay this terminal value is as per goddess growth model assuming that the company will sustain this 2.5 percent growth post projection period of five years now friends let's calculate present value step number four is what present value of free cash flows to the firm and terminal value step three was calculation of terminal value we are done with that now, step four is the calculation of present value of the free cash flows, what you have projected for five years and present value of terminal value. For that, guys, we need discounting factor. So discounting factor is nothing but the value of one unit, one dollar in the present case. OK. Discounting factor. One divided by one plus discount rate raised to key power period. Okay, raised to the power number of years. Friends, in this we can freeze this discount rate. Okay, that's it. We just need to freeze discount rate. And guys, as you can see here, I'm using media discounting. Okay, you can see drop down at the top. If I keep this option as per year in discounting, it will become year one, two, three, four, five. And if I switch to media discounting, it will become 0.5, 1.5, 2.5 and all, right? So what the concept of media discounting? Friends, 
in the media discounting we are assuming that the cash flows are happening throughout the year so we are applying discount period for the mid of the period okay it's the average of beginning of the period and end of the period whereas in the year end discounting we are assuming that this cash flow is happening at the end of the year only whereas the practical approach is using mid year discounting because this cash flow is not happening all of sudden at the end of the year this cash flow will happen throughout the year so under mid year discounting my discounting factor is coming 0.97 we have freezed discount rate don't freeze your discounting period and drag this we got discounting period uh, discounting factor now present value of free cash flows to the firm and present value of terminal value because these cash flows what we have projected they are in the future okay these are the future value of the cash flows and this terminal value is also this terminal value is happening at the end of the projection period okay so this is also future value so let's discount these cash flows to the present value okay step number four so my future cash flows into discounting factor discount factor and copy this formula okay we got present value of future cash flows okay now if you sum up if you sum up all future years cash flows present value five years cash flows present value the sum is coming four five two zero nine so this four five two zero nine is capturing present value of the cash flows for next five years now friends let's calculate present value of terminal value after five years we have terminal value 273074 but this terminal value is available after five years right so let's calculate present value of this tv which is terminal value multiplied by discounting factor of the last year because this terminal value is available at the end of the projection period and the present value is coming 201539 friends firm value value of the business DCF value of the entire business is what present value of free cash flows for the projection period plus present value of terminal value this way you are capturing the value of entire life of the business cash flow value of entire life of the business so my value of business DCF value of the business is 246749 now friends this value of the firm is coming from the core operations right it is only from the operations because we have captured cash flows coming from the operations if your business has some non-operating investments or assets we'll add value of those non-operating assets to get the total value of the firm because those non-operating assets values are not captured through free cash flows projections right so non-operating assets as on date we can link this from the balance sheet and as per balance sheet the value of non-operating assets you can see they have some short-term investments okay they have made some investments outside the business 394 and some investments in non-controlled affiliates 3074 so we added these two values to get the value of non-core assets what company is having in the balance sheet and it is coming 3467 so value of the total firm is this plus this 250216 this value belongs to entire firm okay entire business including operation and non-operation both parts okay now friends from this firm value we'll calculate value of equity okay and to get the value of equity from the value of the firm we first have to subtract claim of the debt debt and debt equivalents in the business we'll add cash into this if there is any cash left in the balance sheet that will also be added that will go to the equity and minus non-controlling interest if there is any capital which is invested by the minority interest in the business that will also be subtracted to get the claim of equity holders right so let's link these values from the balance sheet first debt as on valuation date you can see as per the balance sheet of December 22 obligation as per uh, under debt is short term obligations we have 3414 plus there's some long-term obligations right three five six five seven so this is coming three nine zero seven one total debt of the company total debt of the pepsico as on valuation date add cash okay 
so the cash they have in the balance sheet on the valuation date is 4954 minus non controlling interest so let's check out in the balance sheet if they have any non controlling interest yes they have non controlling interest 124 so friends if you make adjustment of these three component you will be left with the value of equity dcf value of equity let's calculate 250216 value of the firm minus debt plus cash minus non operating non controlling interest right now friends this 215 is the intrinsic value of the equity dcf value of the equity right this value belongs to equity holders okay if you want to calculate dcf value per share we'll divide this dcf value of equity with the number of shares so number of shares of PepsiCo, let's get these number of shares. We can get these number of shares from the company's filing. PepsiCo's December 22 filing, latest filing as on valuation date. And guys, in case of the US companies, we can get this number of shares on the first page itself. You can see they have clearly mentioned the total number of shares of PepsiCo outstanding is 1377251316. So let's copy these number of shares let's put this number here and because this is an absolute number we can convert this into millions because my entire data in this model is in millions so one, 10 raised to the power 6 one three seven seven million shares and my per share dcf value is coming 156.8 friends this 156.8 is the intrinsic value per share of pepsico dcf value per share of pepsico as per gordon's growth model of terminal value now let's calculate let's calculate terminal value with the different method okay exit multiple approach friends as you can see we have already punched here 14 times of ev to beta multiple we have taken this from the relative valuation so we are assuming that at the time of exit pepsico will be able to command 14 times of EBITDA as its exit value or terminal value so we'll multiply this with the terminal year EBITDA and the terminal year EBITDA is we can link this from above we have EBIT here EBIT plus DNA right we got EBITDA so terminal year EBITDA we got terminal value would be 14 times of terminal year EBITDA terminal value is 298008 okay as per exit multiple present value of this terminal value because guys this terminal value is at the end of projection period so present value is 219942 friends value of the dca value of the firm would be equivalent to present value of terminal value plus present value of projected years cash flows 265151 this value is from the core operation as we discussed above so we'll add value of non operating assets we can add this from above three four six seven okay so we will get total value of total dca value of the firm two six eight one six eight uh, six one eight we'll adjust claim of debt minority interest and we'll add cash to get the value of equity so let's link this from above value of debt cash and minority interest okay so dca value of equity would be value of the firm minus debt plus cash minus non-controlling interest 234377 number of shares we can again link from above and my per share value is coming as per exit multiple approach is 170 dollar so guys we got two different dca value of pepsico one as per gordon's growth model and second value is as per exit multiple method okay both these values as they are calculated on the different basis they will be different they may be different right so it is not necessary that the both these values will be same because here the basis of calculation of terminal value is multiple market approach relative approach and whereas in this method the basis of calculation of terminal value is Gordon's growth model where the value is calculated assuming there is a constant growth what company can sustain forever and this is nothing but the present value of all future cash flows assuming a growth rate is 2.5 percent 
So friends, as you can see, we have calculated DCA value of PepsiCo under both the methods of terminal value. Now let's compare this with the current market price. Let's see what the current market price of PepsiCo as on valuation date. As my valuation date is 31st December 22. So let's compare this value, this, this DCA value with the current market price of PepsiCo as on 31st December 22. Okay. So we can check market portal. Let's check this on Yahoo Finance. PepsiCo. And if you check the historical data, uh, you can select date range here. We need 31st December 22 price here. So we can keep this range starting from 1st of December and ending till I'm sorry 31st December 22 and apply this range. So you can see guys that on 30th of December 22 so 31st was the market holiday on 30th December 22 the closing price was 180.66 dollar per share so pepsico was trading in the market at 180.66 and as per intrinsic value dcf value the stock is worth of 156 as per goddess growth model and if you apply exit multiple where the market plays a dominant role 170 so we can see guys we can say that this stock is slightly overpriced in the market okay Whichever method we follow, say if we even if we follow exit multiple approach, still this stock is slightly overpriced because worth is or DC of value is coming 170, whereas market price is 180.66. So this is how we calculate. We can calculate DC of value of any company in the market, guys, and we can also use this technique in investing also. We can know the real worth of the business, cash flow based valuation of the business. And on this basis, we can decide which stock is overpriced or underpriced in the market. Okay, guys, we can also run sensitivity on this DCF value. We can see how this value can change by changing some key assumptions, some basic assumptions, what we have used in the DCF. Okay, so we can run this sensitivity analysis also. Let's see how we can do that. Friends, to run sensitivity analysis, we first have to link this final output. So let's first run this sensitivity on the first output, Gordon's growth model. Okay, so we have two output here and we'll be preparing or we'll be running two different sensitivity. Okay, so this is my final output of Gordon's growth model per share DC value. Then you have to select this entire range of the data table. Okay, then guys, you have to go to the data what if analysis uh, data table third option there you will get this pop-up you have to first provide a link of row input row is what your what you are using what assumption uh, on which you are running this variation in the row and you can see we have back range in the row we want to see how the value will change if there is a change in the weighted average cost of capital so i'll provide link here to the back Okay, this is my input cell for the VAC and in the column, in the column, we have long term growth rate. So my long term growth rate input cell in the model is D26. So you click OK and you will get all possible values, all possible values under different scenarios. Okay, if there is a change in the VAC and if there is a change in the long term growth rate assumption, your value will also change. Okay. So this is what sensitivity analysis guys where we see how sensitive your your final output is to the key assumptions if there is a change in the assumptions how your value will change let's say guys if my seven percent is a base case assumption because my vac is 6.98 percent so ba base case assumption is seven percent right and my long-term growth rate base case assumption is 2.5 so my per share valuation is this right this is my base case value right now, if we assume that there can be a variation of 0.5% either side in the VAC, okay? So VAC can increase 0.5% or decrease 0.5% in future. And there can be variation of 0.5% on the growth side also. So it can be 
टू परसेंट टू थ्री परसेंट लेट से ओके बिकॉज टू पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट इज माई बेस केस असम्शन सो इफ आई एज्यूम अ चेंज इन द ग्रोथ एंड चेंज इन द वैक इन दिस रेंज ओके सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव टू सॉरी सिक्स सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव टू सेवन पॉइंट फाइव वैक एंड ग्रोथ इज टू परसेंट टू थ्री परसेंट लेट मी हाईलाइट दिस ओके so this part of the sensitivity table tells me the most probable valuation range okay so i'll get the max minimum valuation if my vac is 7.5% right and my growth comes down to 2% my minimum valuation is 126.2 but in case i am able to manage my cost of capital to 6.5 and i able to get 3% return or uh, 3% growth in the future i am able to sustain 3% growth in the future my valuation is coming through 203.1 okay so i can say as per sensitivity analysis my valuation range is 126 dollar to 203 my valuation can fall in this range depending upon variation in these two key assumptions right so friends this is what sensitivity analysis likewise we can run sensitivity analysis on the second output where we are calculating dcf value using exit multiple approach okay so we can assume variation in the vac on the another side we can assume variation in the exit multiple and we can see different different output under different different scenario so friends this is what dcf valuation method we can use this method to find intrinsic value of any company or any business you can see basic difference between the relative valuation and dcf valuation is under relative valuation the valuation is completely dependent upon how the market is deciding valuation of the other companies so the market view plays a dominant role there whereas in a dcf valuation it's completely based on your assumption about the company how you are projecting cash flows what growth you are capturing in the future cash flows and accordingly the valuation is decided so here your view is playing a dominant role in deciding the valuation so friends this is what basic difference between these two methods so friends i hope you enjoyed this video on dcf valuation in future we'll be coming out with more videos on say beta calculation and other valuation methods so stay tuned stay connected goodbye